Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got a big dose of space weather, had a solar storm overnight, and at least two more impacts are coming. We'll also go into deep space and see some key solar forcings of the atmosphere, but we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. There is one M-class solar flare from a double eruptive event near center disk. We'll analyze that momentarily, and the corona hole expanse coming in behind it is even bigger than it looked at first. But first, let's go in solar storm order. Last night, a solar wind disruption tied to a magnetic reversal of the interwind field caused a level 2 geomagnetic storm. Auroras were likely cranked up a bit last night, but it was just below the technological concern level. Despite the big hit to the magnetometer, Russell McPherson effect there big time, KP index jumped to a peak of 6, which is preconditioning for what's likely coming over the next couple days. First, that double pop near center disk did release a coronal mass ejection. It was not a huge one, not tremendously dense, but the heliospheric monitors clock it at a sick speed, really fast, and expected to arrive tomorrow night, or at the latest Monday. NOAA is suggesting that if it arrives tomorrow, we're going to get level 3 geomagnetic storm conditions, but I'd guess that may wait for the next impact that's coming right after it. Corona hole stream on top of all of the preceding shock fronts. It was already the biggest corona hole of the solar cycle, and now we can also see it is touching both polar crowns at the same time. And yes, the earthquake watch from it kicked in yesterday, as we discussed, and it was a slow start, to be honest. 6.2s in Alaska and Panama. Panama actually rang in initially at 6.5 and was downgraded, but luckily it was offshore with little land impact. We're still watching. Up next, we're going deep into space, and yeah, I know I say that a lot, but we are actually going pretty darn deep today, as in the furthest known galaxy. I think that counts. And astronomers had an oh crap moment when they specced oxygen in the primordial mass. It's too much, too heavy of an element for this stage. The cosmic timeline is a very bad joke. They really have no idea how this realm came together. Good paper up next, looking a bit too far down the line. It's excellent that they've tied the most extreme floods and droughts to solar activity, and the rest of the story is El Nino, which the sun also controls, but actually could have gotten a bit more specific. And luckily, there's another paper out here today that comes much closer. Paper number 2000, detailing how the sun controls monsoon rains. They get close, discussing changes in modulation of circulation cycles, and that is indeed what puts the monsoon in place, and also controls Pacific clouds, which work El Nino. At its base, all long-term solar forcing is made through the Hadley cells and Walker circulation. Write that down. Thanks to our sponsor, Gold Co. They made goldobservers.com so this community can catch up to the most serious preppers who stack gold and silver. It's a backstop now. Barter rich in a struggle, and they have significant scientific benefits even after the end of modern civilization. Need to do a video on that soon. Anyway, catch up with the rest of us. Goldobservers.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.